those of you who like forceful entry, are these three Halligan bars the same? I like to do this. This is fun. Are, are they the same? They're all a Halligan bar. I had my friend Nathan from Canada on here. He'd probably be screaming at me right now. No, they're not the same. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> so, someone's very passionate. Good. They're not the same, right? Neither is uh, a standard ground ladder, like an Alkalite versus a dual safety. Neither is a fire truck a fire truck. So if that's the case, if a tool is not the yeah, hooligan, if a tool is not just a tool, if there's different variations and grades and models, why are all three of these considered a tick? That's just a tick. No, it's not. Each one of these is made at a different time frame, like the Draeger was made in 2011, the ISG was made in 2012, the K65 from FLIR was made in 2016. They're all three high-resolution cameras pointing the exact same max firebox producing three different images. But yet NFPA 1801 was supposed to standardize that. Has NFPA successfully standardized anything and made it uniform as of yet? No, because there's always a variance. There's always some little loophole. And in this case, 1801 allows the manufacturers to choose when color engages, at what temperature, at what percentage, what resolution, and how sensitive the camera is. Do you think an engineer needs to make that decision who doesn't do your job and understand your environment? As much as I love the Draeger, it shows red at 270, and it also shows red and low sensitivity at 1,500 degrees. That's a big difference. One you're cooking barbecue at, the other one you're melting aluminum. Red's not just red. You need to know your camera. So here's your warning. What we're telling you tonight should not be done, attempted, nor even talked about if your camera looks like the picture in the bottom right-hand corner. That is a black and white TV on a stick. That is a Scott 160 or a Scott 320. They look like a NASA space helmet with a giant club handle. Thor would use it for a hammer and be sore when he was done with it. They're very heavy, very old. That's a 2001 model. It's a 2016 FLIR K65. Both of them pointed the exact same object, Max Firebox. Which one would you want to search for your kid with? There are departments still using cameras such as this one on the bottom right-hand corner and expecting to have good results with it and not upgrading their technology. They upgrade everything else. But in my experience, the tick is the last thing to be upgraded, and it has the most significant impact on locating the victim and locating the fire. So here's what you need to know about this section. Some of you asked about the Seek Fire Pro. I want you to understand this and take this back to your fire departments, your firefighters, and your decision makers. This needs to be shouted from the rooftops because I can't do it. I've trained over 10,000 people, and I still have made a dent in it, okay? You need to understand that there are two types of cameras currently being marketed to the fire service masses. One is called a situational awareness tick. That is a lower resolution, cheaper, slower camera. It's designed for one purpose, ladies and gentlemen, to get you out of a jam, to prevent you from being disoriented. That was the sole reason those cameras were invented. Unfortunately, through a lot of lack of training and education and unethical salesmanship, they have been sold to do everything. You know, the MSA ITIC instructions say it can be used for 360 search, stream placement, and all that. And then the color palettes that are within that camera, none of them are designed for fire attack. Not one. The only one I would recommend would be white hot. That's not a good idea. The Seek Fire Pro is a situational awareness camera. It has the highest resolution out of the four that you see there, but has the lowest temperature threshold at which it would fail at. It's a good camera for its original intended purpose, but if you're doing live burn training like I'm doing, on about the fifth or sixth run, it overheats and quits working. The K2 and the K1 produce a good image, but both of them are nine hertz processors, which is ridiculously slow and frustrating. So is the Scott site. It's designed to prevent you from getting disoriented and lost. But if it takes, mm, I don't know, five seconds for it to catch up every time you move, because the human eye sees 27 hertz, and this is only at nine hertz, are you really going to stay oriented and situationally aware with any of those cameras? Not necessarily. The fastest of the two would be the Seek at 15 hertz and the, the uh, iTIC at 30 hertz, which you want to stay at 30 hertz. But the Scott site, 9 hertz, and has a Bluetooth between the camera and the in mass display. 
and then you have two batteries inside of your airway that fail at 302 degrees and put, push potassium hydroxide into your nostrils. That's not a good idea. These are great concepts, but poorly executed. If I had to buy any of these, it would only be the Seek or the Clear ones. I would leave this other two alone down here because they were, they're great marketing tools, but they got the wrong guts in them, okay? If you look on the right, the other type of cameras are called decision-making cameras. If it's a decision-making camera, ladies and gentlemen, whose hands should it be in? Should the company officer turn around and hand the tick to the young firefighter in the back and say, hey, carry this darn thing. I don't know how to use it. No. The company officer is responsible for what? Watching over the crew and making decisions. Can they adequately do that if they can't see everything that can hurt them or direct them? No, they need to have this camera in their hands and they need to lead them and guide them and direct them. They need to be trained in it. You should not have a nozzleman with a decision-making camera in his or her hands. Yes, I agree. High resolution is a requirement. It's an NFPA requirement. It should be a minimum of 320 by 240. If you don't know your cameras, ladies and gentlemen, when you're done tonight, please find your camera, find your brand, and email me. I'm proficient in over 75 different models. I have a tick guide I sell. I have basic information I give away for free. Whatever it is, we can get you educated on your camera. But it needs to be at least a 30 hertz processor refresh rate. If you bought a TV less than 30 hertz, your family would be extremely excuse me, frustrated and disappointed because the signal, every time the picture would move, it would be choppy or it would lag because your eye sees 27 hertz. Remember this, hertz is one hertz is one frame per second. If you have a nine hertz camera and a 27 hertz eyeball, one's not keeping up with the other, okay? And these are used for strategic decision-making. If you have a nine hertz camera, it will hurt performance, period. And they're not doing that to make you mad or make a cheap camera. The nine hertz rule is because of a wonderful, wonderful problem we have in this world called terrorism. Nine hertz is, is the only camera allowed to be shipped outside of the U.S. and Canada because of a law called ITAR, International Trades and Arms Regulation Law. If you don't know this and you get on a plane like I've done and you have a 30 hertz or 60 hertz camera and you don't have special papers and you decide to go travel somewhere that you're not supposed to, you'll get a special little trip to a little room to the side uh, that you've never seen before and they'll ask you some very uncomfortable questions. And then they may keep your camera, your drone, and your stuff for 30 days in the UK before you get it back. They just might do that, okay? Because this is originally military-grade technology. It was not designed for us. It became us, ours when it was downgraded and released to us in the 90s. When Cadillac bought a bunch of these things and decided they were going to put them in their cars so they would help their uh, drivers out, but then they realized that was even too pricey for their customers. Then all of a sudden they had a bunch of these detectors laying around and all of a sudden we got Carnes irises and all kind of cool stuff showed up. But look how far we've come. We went from something the size of a bowling ball to now it's the size of a cell phone. Matter of fact, you can buy a cell phone one now called the Blackview. Uh, it's uh, $500, less than the cost of an iPhone. It has a 48 megapixel digital camera, a built-in FLIR camera that's 80 by 60, which is very low resolution. But if you're an in, in, in construction or inspector, awesome little device for inspections. Okay, here's why you don't get these two mixed up, ladies and gentlemen. The camera on the right is a FLIR K2. It's a situational awareness camera is around $1,000, depending on where you buy it, $999 to $1,400. Bucks. The camera on the left is a FLIR K65, NFPA 1801 approved, decision-making camera, uh, 76,800 pixels versus 19,000 pixels. This is, Look, both of these cameras are pointed at the same image. One of my instructors is approximately 15 to 20 feet away. Watch as he walks forward. Look at the camera on the right. Look at the camera on the left. Tell me the difference. Yeah, start walking towards Terrence. Walk all the way to us. Very good. Notice the camera on the right, very low resolution, very poor quality. When you look at this in the day room, though, what you'll notice is it looks, looks pretty cool in the day room because the K2, along with some other cameras like this, have two cameras on the front. Make sure when you do this, when you buy a camera, if you're buying a situational awareness camera, look at the front of it. If you can see my picture here, you'll see on the front of this K1, it has two lenses. Why's it got two lenses? Because one of them's an infrared, one of them's a digital camera. They take those two pictures and they overlay them. It's called fusion. 
use that in inspections, industrial stuff all the time because an electrical inspector, when he or she looks at a breaker box, they need to be able to read it. You're not going to read letters with an infrared camera unless those letters are hot. That's a trick. So when you go into a fire, you ever watched your helmet cam footage when you go into a really smoky environment? How good is your helmet cam footage? Not so good because you don't have visible light. So your camera on the right with that K2 don't look so pretty when you go in the environment you actually have to function in. So keep in mind, if you're going to buy a camera, make sure it's going to work in its proper context. The one on the right is designed to help your firefighters find you, find their way out. The one on the left is designed for the company officer to watch over their crews, make decisions, and do all the things that you would normally do in a fire, but do them faster, better, and more effectively.